Hi everyone, Sherlad here. Ever since the Gundam Battle Royale came out, the fairly well-liked game series had gained a handful of really neat features. Weapon switching, actual iframes during the special attacks, and the topic of today's video, subflight systems. I'll be focusing on the ones in Gundam Assault Survive, since it's not too much of a hassle to get those, and some of the camera-related issues are no longer present in this one. Regardless, let's start. For those not playing the home game, subflight systems are these rideable flat vehicles slash platforms, which are basically in Gundam for carrying mobile suits and letting them do their best impression of the Green Goblin. This game has 11 of them. Granted, the game counts the Rigazi's back weapon system or the Skure from MSX as one. You can equip them in the setup screen before the mission. Which is neat, since in the Zeon campaign for 0079, you can get one super early, giving you a decent boost to mobility. Controls-wise, I'd say they're similar to the mobile armor mode controls with the D-pad letting you turn, ascend and descend. The left bumper lines you up with the lock-on target, assuming you're using the usual flying ones, and the dismounting is done by tapping cross and square at the same time. Just like the transformed mobile suits, it has a fairly clunky ramming attack, Though, as far as the ranged weapons are concerned, you get access to all your primary weapons, but your secondary weapon slot is replaced with whatever weapon the subflight system has. There are four exceptions to this. The trio of Skure, Mega Rider and the Burst Liner are turret types, where you only get to use the weapon mounted on them. The fourth one is the back weapon system, which is exclusive to the Rigazi and replaces both your primary and secondary slots with its own weapons. Of course, you can always get back onto a subflight system by turning on the lock-on and moving the analog stick down to lock onto it, and then just running into the thing. The biggest strength of these is that an overwhelming majority of the roster is fully compatible with them, including things like the gun tank, Zamel, Balls, Baku, Masala, Jamru Finn, or even the Ogo mobile pods. Bearing tanks, like the Jewel, Type 61, Hedolfer or mobile armors, like the Big Row, Jormungand and the Rafflesia, you get away with putting just about anything there. Now, the game lets you buy 5 of them in the shop right away. The Dodai YS, Dodai Kai, the Shackles, the Guitar and the Bass Jabber, offering a decent amount of air and space options. By beating the Abawa Ku stage and owning 5 or more mobile suits from their respective factions, you can unlock the Federation's Burst Liner and Zeon's Skure. The G-Defensor can be obtained in the shop after beating the 7th AUWE 7th stage or buying the Super Gundam. Why should you get this one, you ask? To double stack it with the Super Gundam, of course. Yes, it's as disgusting as it sounds. You're welcome! Buying the Double Zeta Gundam and beating the Double Zeta campaign on the AUG side unlocks the Mega Rider, which I do heartily recommend especially if you want a more nimble alternative to the Burst Liner. Back weapon system just pops up in the shop once you get the Rigazi. Though unlike in the show you can mount it again after ditching it and the weapons on it are pretty good. The last one, Gyu from uh, Gunm Seed, is unlocked by owning 5 or more Zaft mobile suits and having cleared the 4th Zaft stage. It's basically a better Dodai for the lack of better words. That's more or less the long and short of it. You now know how to get them, what they can do, and I have also made you aware of the fact that you can, in fact, make incredibly cursed combinations with these. With that, I shall take my leave. Take care, feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. And this is Shirtlade, signing out.